So um, for this demonstration, uh, I'm going to show the capabilities of our our cloud storage uh, plugin extension, which um, has the ability to uh, interact with Amazon S3, uh, Google Cloud Storage, as well as um, IBM Cloud Storage. And we can do a couple of operations, and it's the same across all of all of the different cloud storages that we support. Is that we can um, copy and um, between buckets, we can copy data uh, files between two buckets in cloud storage. We can upload and download the files um, to and from the agent machine, um, and we also have the ability to do um, file triggering on that. So we can we can trigger when a file arrives. Um, it follows very closely to the existing file trigger. And um, we can um, basically monitor a bucket for uh, arrival of a file. So with this particular demonstration, I, I'm just going to show you um, a, a scenario, which is typically what you might see in a pipeline, um, a cloud cloud native kind of pipeline where data needs to be uploaded to the cloud. And then, um, you know, we need to then manipulate that data using some kind of analytics or transforms um, to, you know, generate new data. And I, I didn't include the analytics, but the concept here was, you know, mostly centered around the storage. So basically, once we get it into storage, some kind of analytics can happen. Um, they can use a variety of the different plugins, um, plugin extensions that we currently have to manipulate data in the cloud. Um, and then once the data is, you know, been manipulated, they can push it back out to storage. And in this particular scenario, I was trying to show where it doesn't matter whether you're on um, you know, the Amazon or whether you're on Google, um, we can actually move the data even between the two cloud platforms because we can download it from the Google Cloud Storage or, or Amazon um, S3 buckets, and we can upload it you know, to another cloud. So um, that, as long as it's using S3. So right now we targeted IBM Cloud, uh, Google Cloud, and uh, Amazon or AWS. So um, in this example here, uh, what I did is um, I have a file that's hosted on the agent machine and I'm uploading it to S3 storage. And if you look at the way that the, the job is set up, this is using the plugin extension and it has some information about the, um, the, the endpoint for Amazon. Um, this here is using a new feature in 12.1, which is around the security profiles. So here, all of my access keys and access secrets are stored in Autosys Secure. In, and this is new for 12.1. And then the rest of this information is about how to connect to it. So the, the buckets are in AP South 1. Um, this is the file that I want to upload to the bucket. So it's, it's sitting on the agent machine. And this is the name of the bucket. And this is the, 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 um, the name of the file that's going to be stored in the bucket. So when this runs, it will upload the file there. And once it's done, it will, you know, the job will go to success. Uh, the next thing here is just showing the file watching capability. So this is really the same thing. You, know, you need an endpoint, um, you need security profile, the access keys and the um, secrets and the bucket name. And then this one has some information about the operation. So steady state, we're waiting for 20 seconds for the, the file to be not changed when 20 seconds. Um, we also have the ability to monitor for file size um, as well as um, the uh, use regex so we can do regex pattern matching. And the very last part of it is once, the idea here is that once you get it up to cloud storage, you would put some extra jobs in here to do some ETL stuff, like maybe use glue, or do some other kind of analytics um, in there to um, to man manipulate the data and then restore it out to cloud storage, and then we can download the cloud storage um, from the bucket. So here we are downloading it um, from that bucket, you know, taking the data out and then saving it onto the local system as this. You know, so it's saving it to a different name. And the idea here is now that we can also span multiple clouds, right? So now that we maybe process, did some processing in Amazon, and then now we want to maybe process some data inside of Google. So we want to transfer that data into Google Cloud Storage. So here you'll see that I am uh, taking that data, which is on the, on um, that I just processed with Amazon, and now I'm uploading that data to Google Cloud Storage. 
right? So here you'll see that data one is being uploaded right here. So it's, it's taking out data from the previous job box that I ran, and then that's gonna upload it to Google Cloud Storage. And, um, and then do the exact same thing on Google Cloud. Like I have a file watcher on Google Cloud, which is also monitoring the file for arrival. And uh, you know, same parameters as before, as on Amazon. Except you know, this is pointing to Google Storage. Um, in um, Google, they don't use access keys and access secrets. They use um, something called um, a token file. So this this is a token file, and you know, we know how to generate this special Amazon um, JWT signed tokens. So we can generate the tokens from the the file because the file contains the certificates as well as the signature information. And uh, once this is done, then you know the idea here is that you would process this data, maybe using data flow or data fusion, uh, maybe do something in BigQuery. Um, there's a variety of things you can do at that point in, in Google to massage the data. And then you know we can download it again and you know maybe pass it on to something else. So so this kind of shows you a little bit about the capabilities of how we targeted the uh, S3 um, plugin extension, allowing us to manipulate data in, in in the cloud storage, as well as you know, do file monitoring and triggering off of uh, files, files loaded, uploaded to uh, cloud storage. And so, I, I mean, I could show you this running. So if I if I kick off this box, before I start it, so this might run pretty quickly. So here you see, so the first one it uploaded it. Um, then it's doing, it's waiting for 20 seconds to, to for steady state on the file that was uploaded. So this is just to guarantee that, you know, if you upload it to the files, it may not be fully available in S3. So you can, you know, monitor for steady state. So when, when the file is, you know, doesn't change after 20 seconds, then we know it's actually fully uploaded. So once this is done, and for these things, we kind of give you some details about what you can see. In the job definite in the job running. So if you go to the spool file, you can see what it actually did. So here you see that it um it, these are what you the parameters you specified and it, it uploaded the file for uploading. And um so uh, now it's you know done doing the, the verify and now it's going to the Google part of the the demo. So for all of these, you can get some detail in the spool file about what actually occurred um, in the execution. So this is for the file watcher. So here you'll see it's it was monitoring uh, for file completion. So it, it did trigger. And, and then so then this also ran through. So for the same thing for Google, you can see the exact same information about the Google, the details on the Google run. So here it's uh, it's showing the upload operation and the file watcher is exactly the same. So here you'll see <clears throat> we detected the file was uploaded and the job was marked as complete, and the job also marked as success here. So if this, if this um, if any of these uh, like the uploads or downloads fails, then the job will be marked as failed. So we will know that it failed. But the, the, this is like mostly the beginning of a cloud ETL pipeline that's typically done where you're running a an ETL job where you have to upload and manipulate data into cloud storage.